So there are three aspects of any fissile material that are important in nuclear explosives. That is, how reactive, how how fiss fiss fissionable these materials are, and because that determines the critical mass required for an explosion. The radioactivity and the heat that these radioactive materials generate, which determines how easy it is to handle these materials. And finally, the neutron background, uh, which is the, the, the material just sitting on the table will spontaneously fission at a slow rate. And so that produces neutrons, so it causes you to have a background of neutrons that you have to deal with. Next view graph. So reactor grade versus weapons grade plutonium. All plutonium is man-made. It's produced from uranium-238 in a nuclear reactor. And then 238 is not a fissile uranium atom, but if you expose it to neutrons, you can make plutonium out of it. And there are many isotopes of plutonium, and the composition then of the plutonium that you make, that is its isotopic composition, depends on the length of time that you leave it in the reactor. So typical weapons grade plutonium, the lower line here, in the United States, it's 93.5% uranium 230, I'm sorry, plutonium 239, which is the good stuff, and about 6% plutonium 240, which is what the power industry claims is a problem. Now, reactor grade it has a lot less 239, about 60%. And about a quarter of it is 240, which is the stuff that gives off all of those excess neutrons that are supposedly the problem. In fact, reactor grade is, is often defined as any plutonium with more than 18% 240. So let's go to the next view graph. Okay, so this is a plot of plutonium isotopic composition as a function of the length of time along the bottom axis here that you leave it in the material in the reactor. So when you first create plutonium from uranium-238 in a reactor, it's all plutonium-239. And then as it sits there, the neutrons that are zipping around inside the reactor get absorbed by the plutonium-239 and turn it into plutonium-240. Well, the 240 then absorbs a neutron and becomes 241 and further 242 by absorbing, continuing to absorb neutrons in the reactor. So as a function of time, uh, if you want to make weapons grade plutonium, you leave it in for a very short period of time so that you don't have more than about five or six percent 240. So that's sort of down there where that red square is down in the corner. So you leave it in a short time, take it out, reprocess the fuel, take out the the weapons grade plutonium and move forward. Now, if you're in a power reactor, that's not a good thing to do because you're not making power when you take it out. So you leave it in for a much longer period of time. And so typically getting up to like 18%, which be weapons, which would be reactor grade, is out there sort of at 30 to 35 to 40 megawatt days per kilogram, but that's actually a, a length of time. Uh, so this is, this is why reactor-grade plutonium becomes reactor-grade plutonium and not weapons-grade plutonium. 